Good morning, YouTube. I am headed into school today in order to start setting up my classroom. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it all today. In fact, I've spent the last few days actually painting my classroom and cleaning things up because last year when I first got my classroom, I kind of just ran in and was in like such panic mode because I was expecting to obviously be all virtual and I was spending a lot of time preparing materials. So I didn't really have a lot of time to start preparing my classroom. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me, but I'm gonna take you guys with me for every step of the way. This is what I'm working with right now. You can see it's quite a mess. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on here, which I'll talk to you guys about in a little bit. Um, but for right now, what I think I want to do is just kind of focus on like some of these areas. I need to clean up some of this and, and put some of this outside in the trash. Um, and then I don't know. And then I might need to wipe down all the surfaces because like I said, I was painting. So there's like paints and things that I was scraping up. So I'll do that and then I'll check back in with you guys in a minute. I just finished cleaning up what I could around the classroom. Um, last year, I was able to prime all of the walls and I painted the front classroom wall this kind of really nice gray color. It's called Filtered Shade if you really like it. It's by Valspar. I just went to Lowe's and picked up a couple of gallons. And so what I focus on this week is I just wanted to finish the rest of the classroom. So I painted the rest of the classroom this nice gray color. It looked a little mismatched because the original color of the classroom was like this tan color almost like a beige. So it looked crazy with like the gray front wall and then the white primer. So it was just like, you know what, I'll just color everything the same color. Um, and then what I was thinking, besides like doing the gray, it's kind of like a neutral color. I thought what I could do is do some pops of neon. Um, so I'm absolutely, for some reason, really gravitating towards like this neutral palette, but then like giving some pops of color using like neon. And so one of the things that I made for my classroom this year, which I'm really excited about, is I I have lab stations that I'm going to be creating for my students. When I first started teaching, I set up my lab stations and they had everything that the students needed. However, when I came to this school, a lot of teachers would just set out the supplies as the students need them. And I can see like why they would do that, but I found that by not like setting it out for the students, they had to remember the names of the equipment. So when they would see, for example, a Bunsen burner on a procedure or you know equipment needed, they would be able to determine what the Bunsen burner is. And so that was often the piece that was kind of missing. Um, and so I wanna help build some of that vocabulary back in because it's been a while since my students have been in a lab. So what I did was I used these kind of like neon papers, all right? And so I made all these different lab station signs. And yes, I laminated them. I, I can't help myself. <laughs> I love laminating. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these and put them on all the different lab stations in my classroom. And if you're wondering what I am stocking my lab stations with, don't worry, it's on my list of videos that I hope to share with you in the near future. But for right now, I just wanna do this and then I'll talk to you about some of the other social emotional learning strategies I'm trying to incorporate into my classroom decor. So I ended up putting the lab station signs right on the cabinets. So every lab station has a cabinet and then two drawers, two pull out drawers. So I'm gonna, again, like I said, do a video on this. Um, but for right now, this is kind of what I'm doing. So this gives me a total of 12 lab stations around my classroom. But if you notice, this is going to be lab station number 13. And then I also have lab station number 14 up here. Why do you ask? Well, I've got 30 students in my college prep, one of my college prep sections, and 30 students in one of my AP chemistry sections. So I'm gonna need all the lab space that I can get. 
As far as the social emotional aspect of some of my decor, I'm not quite finished yet, but one of the things that I thought about doing this year is making element tiles out of just how to be a successful learner in general. And so these correspond to my classroom norms. So for example, I have them right over here, I'll show you. So I made these again on just like neon cardstock. And so um, I just, again, laminated them, of course. And I put a little hole on the top. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to hang them from the ceiling. Um, so I've got make mistakes, believe in yourself, participate, right? ask questions. So there's a lot of good ones here, but I think my favorite one out of all of these, I have to be honest, is my inclusion one. And so I'm going to stand up here because it looks like this. So I needed a little bit of weight on them. So I um, painted these wooden beads. I got them on sale from Michael's and I just painted them neon colors and I just attached it to one of these like little like hook things that you can suspend from a grid ceiling. And so I am going to finish completing the rest of these I painted all of the beads for all the different colors um, and then I'll start hanging them on my classroom ceiling here they are so I have 11 total that I am gonna hang up there and hopefully I won't fall hopefully Not bad. I think it looks actually pretty cool. I like them staggered. I don't want them looking all like, I guess, in rows. So I like it. The only thing that kind of stinks is for my um, projector, I wasn't able, obviously, to hang anything in front of that or else it would have gotten in the way of what was projecting. So, But I think it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. There's only one more thing I hope to do before I leave today, and that is to get my cell phone holder together. In the past, I have not required students to put a cell phone in my little holder. Um, this is the first year that I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. It became painfully obvious last year that my students have a very difficult time self-regulating. Um, even the students that were in class with me that were hybrid students, they were on their phone constantly. And I mean, of course, I did my best as a teacher to be safe and then also be engaging, but at times it was really difficult to keep their attention. And so now this year that we're back in person, it becomes incredibly important that we don't miss that precious time. I mean, who knows what can happen? For all I know, we could become virtual again. I mean, I don't wanna say that, but it's true, we don't know. And so I wanna make the best use of our time. And I think by implementing the cell phone holder where the students can simply just drop their phone off in a specific slot that is assigned to them. They can charge their phone if they want in that area. Um, I am toying with maybe giving them a choice, for example, by saying like, if you don't think you can self-regulate and not use your phone during class and leave it in your backpack, you can leave it in this little caddy thing and you can charge it there. Um, however, if I see it, you're gonna lose your phone for the day. So I would just take it, put it in a locked drawer, and then they would come back to me at the end of the day. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. So I'm giving them the choice, which I love choice. I want to give them the choice to self-regulate as best they can. But if they can't, then the expectation will be that they put it in my cell phone caddy. So I made these little label things 
with all the element symbols on it. So every student is going to have their own element that they can put their cell phone into. I do think that on assessment days, like on tests and quizzes, they're going to be required to put their cell phone in there. Um, you know, there's really like no other option. Um, but for regular class, I, like I said, I think I'm going to give them a choice. So I'm going to finish up with that today and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Had a little malfunction with hydrogen. There he is. So this is, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this. I was like, oh, I'll just put these labels right on top of the plastic. And I was like, ah, but you know, it'd be kind of cool if these could stay, you know, nice for a while. So I was like, let me put it inside. And so when I tried to remove the hydrogen, oh my gosh, it was like such a bear. I had to use this like goo gone to get it off. It was like totally ridiculous. So I have to remake another hydrogen, but I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks awesome. Um, pretty happy with it. Um, but then what I'm going to have to do is use these um, like 3M products. Let me see. Do I have them over here? Am I? Mm -mm. No, these aren't. I don't think these are strong enough. Although this is 12 pounds. I think I have 15 pound hangers at home. So what I think I'm going to do is just put like um, those little strips like all, all around like the, the border. And then what I'll probably do is I want to make it accessible for when they, like the students come in and it also needs to be near an outlet. So what I'm probably going to do is put it right next to the door, like right here. I don't really use this um, board so much. Usually I'm using the board in the front. So I'll probably put it here, but I have to, I have to decide. I don't know. I have to, I don't have to decide that yet, but I think for right now, this looks pretty good. I made a pretty big dent in my decor for the classroom. I mean, I did a bunch of stuff at home this summer. So, you know, the cutting out and the laminating and all that stuff, it takes a lot of time. So really just putting it up really didn't take too, too much time. So I am going to get out of here. But before I go, I do have a surprise for you. I am going to share all of the classroom decor items that I have in my classroom with you all for free. So if you'd like to use any of these decor items in your classroom, classroom. All you have to do is sign up for my newsletter and then you'll be sent a password that will tell you how to access my free resource library. And so you can use all of these things in your classroom. And if you have any suggestions on how to make them better, of course, I always welcome that. But either way, I will definitely see you next week because my summer vacation is over. And next week we have three days of in-service. So I'll be in my classroom finishing my setup and then my students come the following week. I can't believe it. The summer just flew by. So I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will check in with you guys next week for the start of school.